black style. Little Caesars Pizza voted the best value in America by Restaurants and Institutions magazine. General Motors, the mark of excellence, and Archway Cookies. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the George Perlis Show. We're going to talk about Michigan State football, the team that knocked off number one. We'll look at highlights. We'll, of course, be talking also about women in the Michigan State locker room. And also, we'll look ahead to the Spartans' next battle in the Big Ten against Illinois. But George Perlis, the Spartans have beaten Michigan 28-27. Have you ever been in a more exciting football game? Oh, I don't know, Terry. I've been in a lot of exciting football games, but this certainly ranks up at the top. Uh, this had a little bit of everything. Coming from behind twice on our part, uh, they come from behind twice, and then they go for two points, and it doesn't work out. But it was a classic. I think uh, it, it really showed the whole country, since it was on national TV, the kind of football we play at our two Big Ten universities, the University of Michigan and Michigan State. And I think we really showcased the state of Michigan. And I, the, the one that should be the most proud is Governor James Blanchard. This is his state, brother. Well, you were called a coach that had a predictable offense. Well, if it was predictable and Michigan knew it was coming, you kind of shoved it right down their throat. You marched for four touchdowns on long possession drives. Yes, that was a good thing about our team uh, t uh, yesterday. Uh, we, we moved the ball a long way, uh, a little chunks at a time, not really any great big plays. So it shows that we have the capability of moving the football. And we had some big plays against us, one big run, one big pass. But basically, uh, we didn't let them uh, drive the ball down our throat. Of course, it was a sellout for the 92nd straight time in Ann Arbor, the 42nd straight in this great rivalry. Let's go to the first half highlights in Ann Arbor. Third largest crowd. At well, George. What a finish. And every fan in the stadium, every fan watching, had to have their heart right in their throat if they're a Spartan. It, it wasn't over until it was over. No, I think right down to the last second, it was an exciting football game. Again, I think that ABC is very happy. Uh, they did a good job entertaining the country. We contributed to it, and so did the University of Michigan. But it was an exciting football game. I'd rather have a lopsided win than an uh, exciting game like that. I don't know, uh, I don't know how healthy it is for you. George, what was the turning point? How did you, how could you control that line of scrimmage? You gotta give credit to the guys up front. Well, there, were, there was a lot of people, a lot of heroes in this game, a lot of stars in this game. But it seemed like every time they'd score, we'd get more motivated, and finally we scored ahead of them. <clears throat> the, the bad play, probably our worst play of the day, was allowing the punt or the kickoff return. That was terrible. Uh, we, we certainly can't let that happen. We knew better. That's my fault. Uh, we should have, and, and you know, you, you, you kick off deep in the end zone, they bring it out to the 20, or they, they, they down it and they bring it out to the 20. Uh, you get a little careless, and you hate to squib the ball and give them the ball at the 30-yard line. But after we got the lead there, there was only one thing to do. I should have squibbed it and instead kicked it off, and they broke a tackle and went all the way. And I felt bad. I was glad the kids bailed me out. Did you think there was a turning point maybe when Aya Quinello made the interception? <clears throat> well, that was a big one, getting the ball near midfield, and then we get a penalty for clipping or blocking too low. Kind of an uh, unusual call at that particular time, and, but we recovered from that and took it down and made a score. People are going to talk about a lot of current controversial calls. A fumble that wasn't allowed by Michigan and <coughs> perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps interference on the last uh, the two-point try, perhaps their first touchdown that went out of bounds. You're going to talk about this one a long time. Well, you never do things uh, to the media and the paper and so on. But this crew that we had uh, needs to get sharpened up. Okay. Well, in the locker room, there were a lot of heroes and a lot of celebrating on behalf of the green and white. And here's how some of it looked. They just stopped them in the goal line stand. Was that what turned it around for you defensively? Well, I think we, we came to the sideline and we corrected the mistakes, which was very little. We just missed a lot of tackles. That's what it was. And on that, that long gain, I, I believe it was about 50 yards, we had three missed tackles and a couple missed assignments. When we got that behind us, we was all right. I think defensively, we just dug down deep, came together and knew what we had to do. And we did it today. The 
the latest controversy for the National Football League is off the playing field and in the locker room. The issue of women reporters in the locker room has resulted in a lot of heat in the NFL. At Michigan State, it's an issue that was faced almost 20 years ago. Walt Sorg reports. The issue of equal access to the locker room is an old story in Michigan State. In the late 60s, Spartan officials first faced the issue and quickly resolved it. Well, we had uh, some people from the state news wanting to, women, wanting to come into the locker rooms. We weren't about to do that, especially at that time. This was discussed uh, with a lot of intensity, and we finally took over an adjacent room right there in the football tunnel, which had been a kind of a power plant before, now was used just for storage, cleaned out the storage and made that the press room and brought players there, and that's where we conducted the interviews. We never had a problem with it. The locker rooms were opened up to all writers for a brief time in the early 80s, but closed again to writers when George Perlis became head coach in 1983. Part of the problem is space. About 100 players dress for each home game in a room designed for about 70. Add to that the recruits and parents who visit after each game, and you've got no room for reporters. Reporters conduct their post-game interviews right next door in a separate room. There's no problem with embarrassment or potential sexual harassment, and all reporters have the same access to players and coaches. It's an arrangement that apparently works, according to some of the reporters who cover the Spartan beat. Does the Klozak uh, locker room policy harm you in doing your job? Not at all, because you ask for the players that you want to talk to, and they bring the players out, and they've never tried to dodge anyone. The players have always been cooperative. The coaches have always been cooperative. So it's never been a problem here at Michigan State. I don't feel it inhibits my job of not being able to go into the locker room. I get all the information I need. The players are brought to you in a prompt way, and I think that's the best way to handle it for everyone. You've been in the MSU locker room on a couple of special occasions. Did you learn anything in there that you wouldn't have learned uh, five minutes later? There were a couple of times I wished I'd been in there uh, when Bill Mallory addressed the team after the Indiana game in 1987 and maybe a couple other times, but I think by and large uh, the players need a chance uh, for a brief cooling off period. And it's better to get them when uh, they're composed and when they come out everyone has the same shot at them. After the game, uh, we get as many players as we ask for and usually they're within 20 to 25 minutes after the game in, in the press room and it doesn't really present a major problem. The only time I've been in the locker room was after the Wisconsin game and he opened it because they had just received a bid to the Aloha Bowl. But it doesn't really hurt, hurt me per se. Do you see any problem with this type of policy for reporters? Well, I can see where it would be a problem if a woman was involved and there are a couple women who do intermittently come on and, and cover Michigan State. I'm not comfortable being around a bunch of naked guys myself so I can see where it would present a problem with a woman but I think if the if the rule states equal access then either let us all come in or don't let, let any of us come in. When the change was made we were home free. We've never had an argument about it. And so for the NFL uh, post-game uh, access is a major controversy but at MSU it's something that was resolved more than 20 years ago. Well, the, uh... the George Perla Show, brought to you by Osmobile. Stop by your Osmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of olds. Strohs, it's not the same as other beers, it's fire brewed Strohs. Mr. Goodrich, the GM service expert in your participating GM dealers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Michigan, the most accepted unquestioned card there is. Buick, new symbol for quality in America. Coca-Cola Classic, can't beat the real thing. Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer, discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. Little Caesars Pizza, voted the best value in America by Restaurants and Institutions Magazine. General Motors, the mark of excellence. And Archway Cookies. Just a couple of hours from now, quarterback Bob Galliano starts as our Lions take on the Kansas City Chiefs. That's this afternoon at 1, right here on TV2.